Hi guys, today's read aloud is going to be a special biography um, in lieu of Earth Day today. We're going to read the biography of Gaylord Nelson, A Vision for the Earth. Gaylord Nelson is who is the creator of Earth Day. It was his idea to have a day that we celebrate the Earth and um, celebrate trying to help the Earth be a better place for us all to live. Before I read it, we're going to go over a couple of words that you guys are going to hear that maybe <clears throat> you may or may not know. Um, one is called activism. Activism is work that is done to change an issue or a cause. So he was active. He was an act. He was an activist trying to um, change the way people treated our earth. Another one is conservation, which means to care for or protect nature. Um, some of you may know this because we have conservations around here. Uh, real close to our school is a red bug slough, which is um, a nature preserve. Um, that is protected and cared for. Another word that I'm going to make sure that I wanted to make sure you guys knew is environment. Um, this kind of goes along with our science lesson this week of the plants and animal life cycles. Um, an environment is the world of living and non-living things. So when you look at your environment, it has living and non-living things. Um, when we're in the classroom, that's our environment. There are things that are living there, like us and the plants in the classroom, but there are also non-living things like the book, the tables and chairs, things like that. Um, another word or another term I wanted you to know is natural resource, which is materials that are found in nature that are useful to humans. Um, I think that these words are going to be important in helping you understand uh, the story a little bit better and help you understand the importance of Earth Day. Um, this is going to be a little bit of a longer story. It's 12 pages, but it's going to be a great biography. Introduction. On many calendars, April 22nd is labeled Earth Day. Do you know what Earth Day is or where it came from? The idea for Earth Day came from a Wisconsinite named Gaylord Nelson. He, wants to, he wanted to set aside a day for people to learn about the environment. He shared his idea with people and it grew into Earth Day. The environment meant a great deal to Gaylord Nelson. It included fields, rivers, lakes, parks, neighborhoods, cities, and so much more. It included everyone and everything on Earth. During his lifetime, Gaylord dedicated his career to caring for the environment and protecting it. A Clear Lake Childhood Gaylord Anton Nelson was born on June 4th in 1916 in Clear Lake, Wisconsin. He had two older sisters named Janet and Margaret and a younger brother named Stanard. He loved to play outside with his siblings and friends. Together, they swam, sled, skied, skated, and explored as much as they could. Gaylord preferred spending time outdoors to studying, but he still did well in school. Gaylord's father was a country doctor and was always helping people. Sometimes he brought Gaylord with him to see patients. Everyone in the community knew their family. The start of a career in politics. Gaylord's family was very active in politics. Starting when he was in elementary school, Gaylord would go to political meetings and speeches with his parents. He idolized Wisconsin politicians like the LaFollette. When they spoke about solving problems and making people's lives better, Gaylord decided he wanted to be like them. He started to think about what a future career in politics and government could be like. Ready to run. After high school, Gaylord gave college a try, but stopped and found work shoveling stone for community projects like new roads and sewers. 
He then decided he wanted to continue his education. Gaylord left Wisconsin to go to college in California. Upon graduating, he returned to his home state and went to law school at the University of Wisconsin-Madison. He got involved in politics on campus and kept thinking about a future for himself in politics and the government. After law school, he served in the United States Army during World War II. While in the Army, he met a nurse named Carrie Lee Dotson. A few years later, they met again and stayed in touch. Later, they married and had three children, Gaylord Jr., Cynthia, and Jeffrey. When Gaylord returned to Wisconsin after the war, he wanted to start his career in public office. He ran for Wisconsin's state Senate. His first campaign ended in defeat, but he didn't let that stop him. A few years later, he ran again and was elected. Wisconsin to Washington, D.C. Gaylord served 10 years in the state Senate and four years as governor of Wisconsin. During those years, he worked hard to reform the government so people could trust it. He fought for equal rights for all people and to protect natural resources because he knew that all places, people, and other living things were connected. It was important to care for all of them. He also wanted people to have places to go and spend time outside and enjoy nature. So he took steps to make that happen with his Outdoor Recreation Action Program. Although many good things were happening, there was much more to do. To make an even bigger impact, Gaylord ran for a seat in the United States Senate representing Wisconsin. Once elected, he moved his family to Washington, D.C. He bought his mission to do more for the environment with him. But it wasn't easy. He proposed bills to ban harmful substances, but they were not supported by many others. He persuaded the president to go on a national conservation tour, but it didn't accomplish what he'd hoped it would. Gaylord felt frustrated, but he didn't give up. He needed a different way to get through to people. He didn't know just what that was, but years later, he would come up with an idea. In 1969, he went to see the damage that had been done by a massive oil spill off the coast of Santa Barbara, California. He was very troubled by the slick oil he saw coating plants and animals all along the shore. On the plane afterward, Gaylord read an article in a magazine, and what he read got him thinking. The article described how college students were holding teach-ins about the Vietnam War. The teach-in was meant to make people more aware of what was going on in the war. What if there were teach-ins about the environment? If more people learned about the environment, they would help protect it. During a speech he gave, in the fall of 1969, he told a crowd about this idea, and soon it began to grow. A Day for the Environment Gaylord thought that all of the teach-ins should happen on the same day. If they did, they couldn't be ignored. People, including those in government, would take notice and be compelled to act. The day he selected for the teach-ins was April 22, 1970. He worked tirelessly to share this idea, but he was also careful not to tell people what to do. He was insistent that they make their own plans and decide what issues were important to them to teach and to learn about, and that contributed to the day's popularity. As it spread, the day also got a name, Earth Day. On the first Earth Day, people all across the country participated in grassroots events. It was far more successful than Gaylord could have hoped it would be. More to do. After that day, momentum kept building. More people than ever became aware of the problems that affected the environment, and more of those people got involved in efforts to help. 
Gaylord and his fellow lawmakers passed anti-pollution laws to make sure there would be clean air and water. During this time, new groups formed to persuade changes in their communities and in politics to care for the earth. Conclusion Gaylord left the Senate in 1980, but he continued to be an advocate for the cause he believed in. He became the counselor of the Wild Wilderness Society that led efforts to protect lands, waters, animals, and much more. He passed away in 2005, but his legacy lives on. Now more than ever before, we have to stand up for the earth and to be good stewards of the environment, so our home will continue to be there for us and future generations. How will you help? So, just real quickly, we're going to do a quick summary or um, kind of a sequential order of what happened in the story. So the first thing was um, that we learned about Gaylord Nelson and how he was from Wisconsin and he had always liked politics even growing up. Then he went off to college and um, started to get into politics and activism in college and then he ended up being a senator um, for the state of Wisconsin and wanting to share his ideas but um, his sharing of ideas was not as successful as he'd hoped then one day he had an idea that people um, have a teach in and to learn about the environment and what we can do to help it and lastly, Earth Day was created by doing that, and the movement um, stuck and is still present now. Um, I hope that this helped you with the sequential order and summarizing of stories, um, but even more importantly, I hope it helped you understand the importance of Earth Day and taking care of the environment that we live in and our Earth so that we can all continue to live here um, on this beautiful planet. I hope you guys have a great Earth Day and can be able to get outside and enjoy some fresh air and the beautiful planet that we live on. Have a great day, guys.